in the back of my Bible for three weeks. Okay? And I didn't, it, and, and it's a sermon some a preacher sent me from Georgia in the mail. I put it in the back of my Bible. And uh, Brother David, I, I t- there's three people I call every day. Every day. Well, four, really, the Lord. I'm not trying to be just spiritual, but the Lord. And then I call my wife every day. Better do that. Or somebody else will. Somebody give me a witness there. And, uh, <laughs> lighten up, people. It's not going to be that bad. And, uh, and then I call my parents every day. They're still kicking. 83 Amen. and 81. And then I call my preacher every day. Yeah. Now, when I was pastor, I, didn't have, I had a Jack Laster. I called him every day. I got my sermons from him every week. So, so. Uh, so I was, he wanted to know what I was preaching. And so I gave him this outline. He knew exactly who the preacher was. You know. He said, that's a good sermon. I said, well, I hope. Yeah. Knowing the preacher that I know, and he knows everything he preaches is good stuff. So hopefully this will help you today. And, of course, I'm preaching on something probably I'm the only one who deals with. I'm being sarcastic. How to have a, have, how to have stress success. So you always deal with stress. If you don't, yeah. you just lie. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Or unless you're from another planet, Truth. we all deal with stress. Okay, we all deal with stress, and that's why it's so important you have God in your life. Yeah. That's why it's so important. Uh, I'm on the road all the time now. Well, yesterday I was in the hospital, which wasn't a busy day. Thank God we didn't move any trailers. But I'm on the road driving them the old rig there, you know. And, Pulling that big trail around everywhere, and you'd be surprised how many close calls every day I have. Like coming back from uh, Charlotte, I had to go just to give you an idea before I get into the sermon. I had to leave Spartanburg, take the trailer down to West Columbia, pick another load up, hit I 77. It's bumper to bumper, no matter where you go. Do you think there's, there's no release from the stress? There's people everywhere. Oh, yeah. Took the I 77, I go to Charlotte Airport uh, to deliver loads at least twice a week. On the way back, traffic backed up in Gaffney, construction zone. Yep. That'll take the shot out of you every day, yeah. drive to that 40 yeah. miles. <laughs> 10 car was well, an 8 car pile up. We sat there for an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> was, oh, what can you do? You just shake your head. Everybody's getting under cars. I mean, what do you do? I hope you don't have to go to the bathroom. That's the what I think about when you get my age. I hope it's going to last long. Yeah, come on. You know? So uh, stress is a big thing in everybody's life. So I hope this uh, little message helps you. Uh, my, my text is casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Yeah, come on. Um, it's important that you realize whether you are a sinner, unsaved, backslid, used to serve God, or you're sold out. Jesus, regard, Jesus loves you and I either way. Come on. Yeah. You've got to have that, okay? You've got to have that. Um, and so I want to to cast your cares upon I'm learning. You know, you, Pastor Sherry put on the messenger, seasons, seasons, you Pastor. You are seasons. I started to say, I hope I don't I taste pretty good. You know, I still call it. I'm flavored, you know what I mean? He does. <laughs> Pastor David Carter, I'm going to clean this up said he's ate a lot of uh, different types of manure plant. <laughs> 20 years I passed his boy. <laughs> he got 40 in. <laughs> I said, Lord, I knew I should have went into doctor business. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, it's something else. <laughs> I, you know, I was sitting there last night thinking at Bible college, I'm sitting on the front row and all those men of God, we had men of God every day coming to preach to us. They probably were sitting there going, oh God, these young people are really going to have to go through it like we have. Well, we didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. You think when you get saved and you call the preach and everybody in the end of church and everything's going to be great. It's, look, folks, that, that's not real. That's not being real. It's, right. a, it's a battle to the death. Come on. So uh, I want to talk about the, the stress here. You know, life does become unbearable yeah, preach, sometimes. Preach it. Uh, sometimes the storm does seem too strong. That's right. I'm telling you. How about the rope of hope cut in half? Ooh, I've been there. Preach. I've, uh, all of us have. Yeah. And uh, 
And a lot of it's like filling in, like throwing in the towel. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Can't do none of those. No. The devil hates a comeback. That's right. Preach that. That'll preach. Come on. The Come devil on. likes people to die and go away. Yeah. Stay Come down on. and he'll beat you to death. That's, that's what he right. wants you to do. He wants preach. you to just quit. Go on yes. straight for nuts and nuts. Can't do that. See, that's the, you've got to do the reverse. There's a lot of time. I mean, when, when the whole world turned against me one time, and it seemed like it did. I don't think it did. But you know how the devil gets you thinking that. You know, you get hit with that blind side, something you don't expect. That's right. And nobody's there but a few yeah. people. Where'd all these people go at? Where'd yeah, all these people go at? But what I found out was that's all just shadows. That's right. When it comes down to the rock model, yes. we got to have God. Preach. I really do. Amen. I mean, I remember when I had to sell all my leftover furniture that was left after everybody stuck me at wherever. And it's just me and my dad and my dog, and I was laying on the floor sleeping on the floor. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And I was really discouraged. I said, why, why did I do this? Yeah, come but on. Anybody that knew me knew. I, I, at that time, you talking about being radical for God, I was that for 20-something years. Yes. I'm laying there saying, why did all this happen to me? I gave 20 years of my life to Jesus and this. In, in the midst of the darkness, <sighs> I didn't even know I was going to get into this. Come on, oh, I heard a voice. Speak. Are you straight? No, I'm not crazy. And I asked Jesus, I said, where are you at, man? Come on. Where are you at, brother? Well, that'll preach. Yeah. And he yeah. said, I'm standing right in this room with you. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You hear that? Woo! Yes! Yeah. Woo! A couple of days later, a bishop called me. Woo! He's in heaven. And he said, I heard what happened. I said, yeah, can you believe all this? He says, shh, just be quiet, be quiet. Mm -hmm. So listen to me. He said, you're on the cross right now, Corbett. He said, but God told me to tell you that one day you're going to resurrect. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! He Whoa. says, I might not be here to see it, but make sure when wow. you do come out of the grave, let hell know I told you. Yes. Come on, man. Yes. Come on. Woo! The, all that stress could have crippled me to quit. Yeah. And I yeah. felt like quit. Come on. Yeah. But you can't. That's right. Here's how you make it. You might want to write this down. Number one, you need to look up to an unequal God. Amen. Amen. There's nobody can touch God. That's right. Sure. That'll yeah. reach. Nobody. Yeah. No nation, no king, no kingdoms. Yeah. That's right. And all of their power and all of their glory. Come on. They can't outdo God. Hey, hey, hey. You studied the history of the world. When I went to Carolina, I studied three years of kingdoms. Russia, China, India, you name it. I had all their history memorized, all their powers, players. We had to memorize, pass exams. They're all gone. Mm -hmm. God's still God. That's yeah. right. Hey. That's right. Yeah. Isaiah 40, 25, to whom will you compare me, God says. You got to look up to this unequal God who says, Who is my equal? Yeah. God says that in Isaiah 40. He says, Who's my equal? Come on. Who's my equal God? Right. That's true. And that's the point. He says, I'm the Holy One. Yes. He's never seen it wow. throughout eternity. That's true. Can you believe that? I do. But I mean, He's God. That's He's right. never seen it. Not one slip up. Who could compare to that? Nobody. That's the That's point. Right. The point is, is that when we walk the floor and worry, we're not looking up to God. I'm not preaching to me. I'm not preaching to That's nobody. Not all this is spiritual. I worry like everybody else. That's I'm right. saying, when I worry, what I'm telling God is, I'm really doubting. Yeah. That's what we're saying. That's right. We don't need to say it. When we get all stressed out and we say, well, that's it. I mean, yeah. the devil's having the heyday then. Well, look at that. Mm -hmm. There's old Cordell. He can doubt who you are. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to do that. We need to know what we need to do, first of all, when we get stressed out. We need to look yes. up. Yes. yes. That's right. Yes. I'll teach you through Psalms 23. I don't, I'm not bringing them. You don't have to follow me or anything. I don't care. But, uh, you know, if you do, you do. You don't know. But here's the thing. One of the uh, shepherd's rod. Is used when the sheep gets discouraged. I don't yeah. know if y'all know this. Yes. The, the shepherd will take his shepherd's staff 
and put it under the sheet's chin and lift his head up. Yes. Yeah. All he's saying is lift your head up. Come on. That's a good old point. Right there. Number two, and I listen to the unlimited God. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Unlimited. Woo. Oh, yeah. That's good, Clay. Unlimited. Yes. You can't limit him. Yep. Uh, Pastor Carter has this saying, he has this saying called living the life of no limitations. Yes, no limitations. When, right. And the reason we can live that type of life, it's possible, it's tough to get to, mm-hmm. it's because the unlimited God lives in our heart. Yeah. I thought Come about on. that coming back, well, yesterday while I was sitting in the hospital. You know, it, you know, I know it, but you know when you know something, then it hits you. Yeah, yeah. Come on. I said, I'm living in you. Like, yes. Yeah. The unlimited God. Yeah. Man, I was in that hospital. I mean, where do you go? There's nowhere to go. Yeah. You don't want to run around the hospital and think you lost your mind. What's wrong with that old man? Yeah. yeah. He's finally tripped. There he is. <laughs> All security. Yeah. <laughs> I had to stay. <laughs> <laughs> God's in the Have you ever been like that? You're in yes. your garage and you're at yes. home and God says something. Come on. You're in here. Woo. That's it. That yes. changes the atmosphere. Yeah, okay. God's, God's in here. He's in the hospital. We need to listen to the unlimited God. Come on. Yes. You can't put God in the box. That's, That's right. Preach that. You'll bust your box all over. That's right. Yeah, I'm preaching. I'm serious. Yes, I am. Me. One time I called him. I just got a big miracle. He said, "Tell me how it happened." Uh, I get these memories flooding. Yeah. I don't know. It just happened. He said, "That is why God's in." That's yeah. right. He said, if you yeah. can explain it, Clay, yeah. God wasn't in it. That's right. Yes, yeah. 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 that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, he used to, he's taught me a lot. David taught me a lot. The preacher brother taught me a lot. A lot of preachers have taught me a lot of things. One of the things that Brother Jack taught me was people worship different ways. That's right. Uh, some people are quiet. Some people are yeah. quiet. That, that's not the point. But this is what he, uh, he, I used to watch him, the way he worshiped was he would just stand. Yes. And when he would stand, you could feel, and y'all will think I'm crazy when I tell you this, you could feel the Holy Ghost blow through the building. Have y'all ever Ooh, met somebody like yes, that? Yes, yes. When he would stand, that's one. Yes. But if he ever took his right hand, That's all he had to do. Hey. There wasn't going to be no preaching. That's right. Everybody knew it, and all the camp meetings down through the years. If Jack's hand ever went up, he ain't preaching. Yes. And he never did. That's right. And I asked him about that. I said, said everybody worships different. Come on. He used to tell me all the time. I'd call him every morning and say, You ready to go eat breakfast? He said, Wait a minute. I got to go take my third shower. Oh. I said, Three showers? What's wrong? You got a skin sore or something? <laughs> he said, No, that's how much power of God I got on me, son. Amen. Amen. And just to go outside. Wow. And you know, you would think that's cocky. I'm going to tell you, he had it. Yes. He had it. He had it. I could be sitting in a church and he'd pull up outside and I'd tell somebody. They'd say something like, Where's Brother Jack? I said, He's out in the parking lot. He said, Well, how do you know? I said, I felt it. You weigh about 400 pounds. Amen. You come in, you can't do anything. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> we need to listen to the unlimited God. You can't put him in the box. That's what Dr. Jack taught me. You can't put him on our timetable, which we yes, try to do. Amen. We can't make God work it our way. We yeah, try to do that. Preach. We can't make God do it when we want it to be done. Yes. He doesn't work like that. He's not a genie. Yes, right. Oh, Lord, he just hit me one. He's not a genie. He's God. Yeah, that's right. There you I'm go. Pull out God and say, I'm going to do this to me. God's going to say, no, I don't, I don't work like that. You don't treat me like, this is not fast food. Right? And I'm, I'm not trying to be critical. That's what we try to do. We try that's to put right. God in a box. We yeah. put him on a timetable. You're yeah. going to do it this yes. way, God. You're going to do it the exact time. And you're going to do it. The, uh, this is the way the miracle needs to go. And God's saying, well, if you're going to do all that, then you do it. I mean, oh, God yes. wants to there do it his go. way. Yeah. Well, yes. It's for our good, but yes. his glory. Come on. Yes. Right. Preach. Right. Yes. Come on. 
We're limited in our knowledge of our circumstances. And that's right. And We're not all it. knowing God is. Yes. And that's why it's important that we listen Amen. to the small, still voice. Yes. Yes. Elijah was one of the greatest men of God that ever lived. He went to a cave one time, and God came to him in an earthquake. Yeah. God came to him in a ball of fire, a yes. Yes. and then a strong wind, right? Yep. And a small, still voice. That's what yep. it was. He heard him. Yeah. It's not all that stuff, all that excitement, but he heard that small, still voice. Preach. And uh, I thank God that I'm learning to listen to God. Yes, right. You would think after 40 years I had learned that. I'm learning all the time. Yes. Yeah. We need to defer, I wrote this down, our situation to the Lord. Amen. He is all knowing, yes. all powerful, yes. everywhere present. That means he's going to see us through yes. all the way on. Yes, he's going to make it for us. Yes. He's going to provide for Come us. On. That's right. Come on. Right. And so we defer our situations to the Lord. Yes. Isaiah 40, 28, and his understanding, nobody can fathom. That's true. All knowing. Yes. He even knows what our enemies are thinking. Mm -hmm. He even tells us that their weapons Form they can't prosper. Amen. 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 Yeah. And you can't outmaneuver God. Yeah, so you can outmaneuver me, I'd be easy to do. <laughs> but you can't outmaneuver God. That's all right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. You put God yeah. in the equation, yeah. you lose. That's exactly right. I mean there's no way around it. He's right. he's never lost. No, that's right. That's no. why it's important we get to God. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to help you. And then last of all, we need to linger with the unfailing God. Hey. There's no better person to hang around yeah. than God. Right. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's Preach. True. No better person. Hey. Yeah. Enoch walked with God. Mm -hmm. Was not. And God wrapped him right in the head. Right. He was a walking one time. I heard uh, Jerry Falwell preaching this one time. No, it was not. It was E.B. Hill. Okay. All these are in heaven now. Yeah. And E.B. Hill said one day, Enoch walked with God every day. And one day he said, well, God, i got to go home. i got a wife and a family. And God said, not today. Not today. Oh, you come with me today. Hey, yeah. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Enoch, he liked hanging around God. Yes, I mean, you study some of the great women of the Bible. Yes. They liked hanging around God. Reach. All the great men of the Bible. All of them. They liked hanging around God. Yes, I mean, I like Facebook and YouTube and TV. It's fun. You can stay connected with people. You see them. But there's nothing like being alone with God. That's right. I'm talking from my experience. I'm 60. I'm getting close, you know. Like one preacher used to say, that fellow there is so old, he's got one foot on a banana peel, Brother Cordell, and the other one's already in the grave. And I go, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> now I'm getting there. I'm getting up there at 60. You start getting age on you, you think about that kind of stuff. You know, if you hear I died, I was covered in blood. Oh, yes. in yeah. and that's what heaven's all about anyway, God. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We need to linger with the unfailing God. Yeah. What does that mean? I wrote this down. It might be a help to you of this. It means to be totally dependent on God. Yes. Yeah. That means to be totally dependent on God. Uh, that's a big statement. Oh, yeah. um, an unshakable confidence in God. Ooh, you know yeah. I didn't write to you this stuff. Ooh. This is somebody else. Hey. <laughs> I mean, an everlasting God. Come out. An there. eternal God. Ooh, yeah. He'll never leave you forsake you. That's right. Truth. I've had plenty of friends. I've had plenty of foes. Oh, yeah. They come and go, man. That's right. But I can tell you, 60 years old, God, and I can never put that on God. God did. You know, people ask me uh, when I went through the turmoil after 20, I had 20 years of a run that was awesome. I mean, every church I had was little and it grow. And Woodland Heights was a struggle because it was a different environment. But other than other ones, we done well. And because, uh, you know, all I had was God. I mean, and uh, we used to have a prayer rock, rock pile yeah. in, the, in Elm City. Wow, with the miracle runs we had there. Uh, it was because we, I built, I told them, I said, all I want, I told those uh, guys there, they said, what do you want? I said, all I want is a cross on a tree. And you hey. listen now. These guys look at me like I was crazy. But 
But after a while, they found out that cross on the tree was turning everything around. I said, a cross on a tree? What do you mean? I said, I want a place where I can pray every day. If you'll do that for me, we'll get along great. I remember one time in Canaan, I'll tell you this, how important it is to linger in God's presence. I used to go every day, and I had buckets. And I'm not bragging on them, I'm using this as an example. And I would pick up the rocks in my driveway and carry them about a half a mile down through the woods. I had a place, they nailed a cross on the tree for me. And I can give you the deepest names now, and you can call them. They'll tell you God did it because of that prayer in the woods. Uh, Wesley Campbell, he followed me. He can tell, tell you how blessed he was. He, he walked into a honey hole after I left, and that's good. I'm not. It's still a honey hole. Mitch Gulch was there now. But I was down there one day. I used to take the rocks. After a while, the deacon said, Preacher, you don't need to be. I guess they, somebody probably said, What's your preacher? Why do you make him pick up rocks? Yeah. You know, so they were rocks. They started bringing bags and dropping them. At Parsonage from Lowe's. I didn't have to pick up no rocks in the box. Yeah. So I was one day, whew, I heard pray. Hey. I only had six rocks, no, seven. And somebody had put a wooden pallet down there for us to burn if we was praying at night to stay warm. It was cold. Mm -hmm. I said, I got to get more rocks than this. Lord, I got more prayers than that. So I put my rocks. And seven rocks in that wooden pallet, and I started looking for other rocks. You don't believe this. I picked every rock around that cross up. So I looked everywhere. Leaves, pushing them. I said, where the hell is all rocks at? And the Holy Ghost said, you got them all. Well, I said, well, I got seven. So I went back over there, and I said, God, oh, jeez, why are you gone? I looked all over for that rock. I said, well, I'm just going to go ahead and pray. I got six rocks. So I threw my rocks on the rock pile. Now they built a big shelter down there where they pray, pray. Man, it's, they got it going on down there now. I didn't have no money to build a shelter. All I had was umbrella, whatever. And uh, I had my back to the wooden pile, and I started crying. I was upset over that rock. And all of a sudden, I heard Jesus. He said, I'm here. Hey, you listen to me. Hey. I had my back. I'm looking over the lake. And I heard the voice of Jesus. He said, I'm here. <laughs> and I was too scared to turn around because it come from back there. Yeah, come on. I said, well, Lord, I'm not turning around. you way more holy than I am. I am not about to turn and look at you. Uh, no, I'm not trying to be strong. Just tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. And I'm lingering in his presence. is what I'm trying to tell you. He said, your rock is on the pallet. Thank you. Are you listen to me. Come on. You can believe whatever you want. I was there. Yeah. Jesus said, the rock is on the path. Yes. Wherever that rock was, he found it. You don't think I'm praying to mean something to him? Amen. Amen. Seven Amen. billion people on the earth, and he comes to my rock pile, picks up that rock, and puts it on the path and says, the rock. Amen. Yeah, he knows where we're at. That's Come right. On. Amen. That's right. I was crying, Melanie, so bad. I couldn't even see. You ever been felt like that? You ever yes. felt like that? Yes. Crying where you don't care who's in I'm on. Yeah. I said, he said, you can turn around. Hey. And when I did, thank God he wasn't there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord. I'm hey. My britches dropped. I got a bell on. <laughs> <laughs> now, that happened one time in Kent, and I was shouting. Yes. I wasn't shouting. I was in the church. Packed house. Terry's was bringing it on. Y'all remember them? Little Libby. Yeah. Was, was there. They yeah. were singing that song in the house of the fed. Man, people were going crazy. That was a free will Baptist church. A woman got shot in the spirit. You don't see that much. She got Ooh. shot by somebody shot her. Jack Lasher turned around, looked at me, and I went, I don't know what's going on. Well, that's me. I'm church God himself. <laughs> Come on. Everything's going crazy. The guy next to me is the captain of the police department said, Cordell, we've got to do something. I said, What is it, brother? He said, we look like Episcopalian priest in my knee shouters. We ain't doing squat. We're up in the choir off. I said, well, praise God. If you'll stand up and shout hallelujah, I'll fake it. That's what I told <laughs> you. That's what I was doing. I'll fake it and say, praise the Lord. Amen. He said, well, here we go. And he jumped up. He said, hallelujah. 
And when I jumped up, I forgot I, I was what I lost about fifty pounds then. I didn't wear my suspenders that night. I jumped up, my feet fell, my pants dropped. All of this is happening while I'm saying praise the Lord. <laughs> I got a video of this. <laughs> Mitch, Pastor Mitch Ingram has the video locked up. Yes. That's the truth. Let's destroy it. And I jumped up, I said, Praise yes. the Lord. And when I looked, I felt my and I dropped, I said, this has all got to be done simultaneously. Yeah. And I felt like somebody shot me and grabbed my britches. They yeah. already dropped to my knees. They got to have underwear on. <laughs> Telling you. I lay down on the floor. Woo. Scott looks at me and says, are you all right? Did you have a heart attack or something like that? I said, no, my britches failed. <laughs> he said, oh, my God. He leaned down and said, I said, he was down there. I was down there. And he said, I said, listen. Look out there and see if any of my members are laughing. <laughs> and like this, he said. <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> Act like nothing's going on. Stand back up. I stood. Well, we got in the restaurant the next day. There was 20 preachers. <laughs> that was when Ryan's was in Lancaster. I was at the very end of Dr. Jack looked down there and he said, quiet, man, quiet. I need to talk to Cordell. Cordell, did you enjoy church last night with the parish? I said, yes, sir, I did. <laughs> I didn't know where he was going. Oh. He said, boy, you was shouting, wasn't you? I said, well, I shouted one time. Yes, I did. Yeah. He said, how about that? Cordell actually shouted. Oh. He said, uh, did anything weird happen last night, Cordell, in the service? I said, well, a lady got slain in the Holy Ghost, and that's kind of against the free will Baptist. Anything else, we know that, Cordell. I'm talking to anything out of the ordinary. I'm like, <laughs> Not that I know of. He said, you just lied. Oh. <laughs> he said, we got it on video. Oh. He said, son, from now on, wear a tight belt and some suspenders. Nobody wants to see your undergarments, man of God. So lingering in his presence, you got to be careful. Thanks for that. Yes. <laughs> when God works out everything according to his purpose toward the will, when he gives it to God, when we linger in his presence, when God brings it to pass, it's for his glory and our good. Mm -hmm. I wrote this down. While we wait on the Lord, we need to still serve him. Yes. We still need to love him and obey him, though we're waiting. Yeah, we need to Help his kingdom. Yes. Preach. There's different ways you can help his kingdom. It's not all about, I know we need money to pay the bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's all different ways you can help the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We need to stay in his presence and serve him. So it all comes down to one, when you're stressed out, look up. Come on. Right. Yep. Yes. Look up. Yeah. To God. He's on eight. Number two, once we look up, we need to listen to him. Come on. Yeah. We need to listen to him. Yeah. Because he's unlimited in his knowledge. Yes. yes. And three, we need to linger yes. with God. Come on. Linger with God. And that's my little message I had for today. I remember. <clears throat> 